Hello and welcome. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist here at Adobe, and it's my pleasure to walk you through what's new and what my favorite features are in Photoshop on the desktop. I've got things for beginners, I've got things for graphic designers, and I've got things for photographers. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, this is more for graphic designers, but I think you know people will take advantage of this no matter who you are. So in this case, uh, I want to make a pattern. And in the past, you would just simply draw whatever you wanted or create whatever you wanted and then go, pat go to the Patterns panel and add it as a pattern. Then you would test it and see if it was really what you wanted. Well, now you no longer have to go through that trial and error because there's a brand new Pattern Preview. So if I just invoke Pattern Preview from the View menu, it turns on this view that's actually interactive. So if I were to add the pattern now, this is what my pattern would look like. But if I were to go in and say, let's say I free transform those two layers and scale them up, I actually get to see what that would look like in my new uh, pattern preview. Now I can even take it a step further. I can free transform them again, grab my move tool, hold down my option or alt key and duplicate them. And again, I can see if I get it sealed off or not because I get to see the pattern preview. Now, if all I wanted to do was create stripes, I'd be done, but I want a little bit more than that. So I'm going to free transform one more time, Command T, PC Control T, and I'm going to right click and I'm just going to say flip horizontal. When I say flip horizontal, that gives me that pattern that I was envisioning. And as you can see, it's a seamless pattern. So no matter how much I scale it out, I get the pattern that I was looking for. Now, last but not least, if I like this pattern, that's when I would go to my window menu, come up to the or come down to that patterns panel and just go ahead and add it in, which I've already done. Uh, so if I just click the plus sign, that would give me the ability to name the pattern. I could name it whatever I want it. So I can call this uh, Geo, Geo Pattern 2. And there, there we are. I have my new pattern ready to go. So now I can apply that to any Photoshop documents from here on out with my new blue and gold pattern. All right. So next up, this is for my beginners out there. Now, in the past, you had the ability to go to Photoshop's search capabilities, and you could search for tutorials. You could type in maybe the name of a tool you're looking for or the name of a filter, and it would find it for you. But now it goes much further than that. When I bring up the new Discover panel, what it shows me is the ability to, again, to type in anything I'm looking for. And it will bring up tutorials. It'll find the tools. But it does so much more than that. We still have our hands on tutorials, but now we've got brand new quick actions. I can also see what's new in Photoshop. I can go to the user guide, the support community. I can look for plugins, stock photos and fonts, as well as even Adobe live content to watch live tutorials to get inspiration. But my favorite feature in all of this is sometimes I want to learn and sometimes I just want Photoshop to do it for me. And that's what these quick actions are. And, and unlike other tutorials where it's based on the tutorial image, I've got my own photograph here, my own stock photo that I want to work on, and I want to remove this background. Maybe I don't have time to learn that right now, so I just click on Quick Actions, and it shows me the most likely quick actions that I would want to do to a photo like this. Maybe I want to just blur the background. Maybe I want to make it a black and white background. But in this case, I want to remove the background. And again, I can go watch a tutorial on that. If I click Remove Background, it's giving me related content to figure it out. Or I can say, I don't have time for that right now. I just want you to do it. So when I click Apply, it actually does everything it needs to do in Photoshop to remove that background. And if it wasn't good enough, if there was still some background maybe in the hair that I need to get rid of, then I can actually go to Refine Edge and uh, or Select and Mask using the Refine tools and do that. And it's even pointing to the select menu in the upper left corner there where I would find it if I wanted to continue on. So it's still teaching me along the way. So that is the new Discover panel. Click the magnifying glass to, to learn, engage, and have it do things for you with those new quick actions. Now, let's go to our next thing. This is for my photographers out there or basically anyone that goes out and takes a photo and the sky just wasn't great. Uh, here I've got a nice image of the Manhattan Bridge in New York, but the sky is eh, it's just okay. So 
We run into this all the time as photographers. Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate with your schedule. You get out, you get up early, you get the, just the right light, but you don't always get just the right sky. Well, now new in Photoshop is the brand new sky replacement. So now I can just go up to my edit menu and come down to the brand new sky replacement. Sky replacements based on either the skies that are built into Photoshop, which we give you quite a few, or your own images, skies you've captured for years can be used. So when I bring this up, it defaults to a sky that's kind of, I don't know, gray skies with clouds and that could be okay. But if I just pop up this menu, I now get to choose from, I have blue skies as a category, sunset, spectacular, and of course you can import your own. Just click the plus sign, go find any image with a sky in it that you like better and use that one. So I've imported this kind of bluish cloudy day. And if I go ahead and click on that, it shows me what that would look like. But there's more, a lot more going on here than meets the eye. Number one, it replaced the background. I had to figure out what the sky was and not the buildings and not the bridge. So it, it did that via Adobe Sensei. But it's not just a static image. I can actually move the sky around within that sky replacement. So what you're really seeing is not only did it replace the sky, but it had to figure out how to mask the bridge, mask these trees and branches and light posts and all this stuff down here at the bottom. It had to do all that and it did that in an instant. That might have taken me minutes if not hours to figure that out and get that done. So it did all that for me. Now, there's something more. Not only is it replacing the sky, and I kind of replaced a daytime sky with a, with a daytime sky, but what if I change to a different time of day? What if I go choose like a sunset and I do that? Well, it's also applying that golden hour, that kind of blue, bluish sky to the buildings. So someone might point out, well, Terry, it didn't replace, it, it colored the buildings but, and the bridge, but it didn't replace the blue skies that were reflected in the windows. And you're correct. It didn't do that automatically, but we give you the next best thing. If I come over here to the panel, and I haven't said okay yet, there's a brush for masking things that it didn't quite do. So I can switch this to any mode that I want. So I just go to normal, for example. I can actually start brushing in those windows and replacing it with whatever I want. So I can use whatever blending mode might work best for what I'm trying to do. Maybe it's multiply. It really depends on the sky that you're trying to do. Maybe it's overlay. So it will. It, that's why we let you choose whatever works best for you. In this case, I think it's gonna be normal and I could go ahead and take the time and, and zoom in and really brush in the proper sky or better yet, just brushing out the sky that shouldn't be there and of course, I can apply uh, whatever percentage of opacity as I'm doing this as well. So if I wanted to get rid of some of those uh, reflections from the other sky, I just go ahead and brush those right in and tone the windows to be exactly what I needed them to be. Now, if you don't get it all right in the first pass, no problem, because once you accept this, once you click OK, and here I can go pick a different sky, for example. One of my favorites is actually this sunrise over a pond. Um, once I get the sky that I want and click OK, it creates a layer group with all of that content. I can even get back to the original mask and I can get back to those windows and get, keep working on them and get them just the way I want. Take more time, dive in, and get it the way I want it to look. But that is the brand new sky replacement, creating a layer group, making it totally non-destructive, and you can even undo it and start over and, and pick a different sky if you want but it's amazing what this can do. And again, since it's a layer group, I can always get back to my original layer with my original sky and pick a different one and show my client different ones to choose from. So that is the new sky replacement in Photoshop. I'll be using this a lot. I love this feature. All right, next up, uh, let's go into a picture of yours truly, but why are we here? Because we're gonna show you one of the most exciting things um, in Photoshop is the new neural gallery. So if I go to my filter menu, there's a brand new neural gallery or neural, neural, filters, um, neural filters command, which gets you to the neural filter gallery. Now, in this case, I've already done some of the work up front. I've converted my image into a smart filter so I can apply it non-destructively. And I've just, um, I've gone ahead and invoked that filter. So if I just double click on it to get right back to the dialog box, I'm using the smart portrait command. So. With that, and I, I really didn't do anything, I just did a one degree light direction change just to get it started, but I haven't really changed the photo. 
Now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to do a head direction change. This is one of the simple ones where I think it's the easiest to see the difference. So if I just go ahead and turn my head a little one direction or the other, we can see Photoshop calculate that change and oh my God, it took a still photo and turned my head. I can go back the other way. Let's turn it the other way and see what happens. And sure enough, it turned my head. And you can even go in and affect things like the gaze, which is which way your eyes are looking left or right. So I can even make my eyes look to the left, even though I've turned my head to look to the right. And even with my glasses on, it did a really good job. Now keep in mind, you can output this all as layers and you can go in and uh, work on this uh, and more if you want it to mask out things you didn't want it to do or not do. Now, let, that's all fun and games, but the thing that people are really going to want to dive in right away on this and see, facial age. They're going to want to see what Adobe Sensei thinks they're going to look, look like when they get older or younger. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and crank up the age because I'm curious to see what I'll look like in another 10 or 20 years. And there I am. Okay, Adobe Sensei, yay, thank you. I get to keep my hair. Maybe I won't have as much of it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn down the hair thickness. Maybe it'll thin out a little bit, but I get to keep it. And you know what? Hey, I can live with that. If Adobe Sensei thinks I'm going to look like this in, in 10, 20, 15 years, I'm okay with that change. All right. So that is the neural filter gallery, and that is the smart portrait option. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to show you one more because this one, as, as a photographer, this one kind of blows my mind. So when I'm looking at a black and white photo like this, so there's no hidden tricks. This is the background. There's no extra color layers I turned off. This is actually a black and white photo I got from Adobe Stock. Never saw, I never saw the colors. I don't know what the colors would look like for this photo. However, I can start guessing. This is grass, so this probably got some green in it. These are sheep, so they could be beige or brown or black. And then there's some trees, there's some green, probably trees in there, some mountains and some sky, and of course the sun and the, and the sheep herder. Now, if I were going to colorize this photo and start creating layers and painting in all those things using brushes, it would take me hours, if not days, to colorize an entire photo like this, to get it to look right. Well, let's go back up to the filter menu. Let's come down to those neural filters one more time. This is not a portrait, so we're not going to do smart portrait, but we are going to go in and we're going to go to the um, beta area and we're going to go ahead and click colorize. And when I click colorize, just by turning it on, Photoshop's neural filters were able to figure out what a scene like this might have looked like in color and create it and it even created it as a new layer. So if I don't agree, I can mask out and, and go recolor anything I want. But it took a second as opposed to minutes, hours, or days that it would have taken me to do this manually. And it did a really, really good job. So at 100%, now there are a couple things, little things I'd fix. But for the most part, it nailed it. And those are the new neural filters that people will go crazy about using from here on out. So those are uh, some of the new things that are uh, in Photoshop. Uh, for the Max 2020 release, which is technically Photoshop 2021. And I can't wait to see what you do with it. And join me, of course, every Friday or most Fridays for my photography masterclass for all my photographers out there on Adobe Live. So um, b.net slash Adobe Live, Fridays at 8 a.m. Pacific Time, 11 a.m. Eastern. I'll see you then. And thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.